Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and GDC ended for 2023. We didn't hear a whole lot from Unity about changes to the Unity game engine. Now, if you were at GDC itself, uh, you got a lot more information, but until uh, just a couple days ago, the Unity roadmap wasn't released online. So they did a presentation about it. You definitely could check out this video, although it is uh, 53 minutes in length. So what I am instead going to do is run through the same deck or the same slides they used in this presentation. I'm just going to do it in more of a turbo manner. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on the stuff that's specifically new to 2023, mostly because I already covered the 2022 releases in previous videos. So a lot of the features they talked about for 2022 are coming in 2022 with long-term support release. I've already covered on the channel. So do check out those prior videos for those details. I'm going to mostly focus on the future stuff that is announced in this roadmap. Now, this roadmap was not publicly made available. A number of Bothans died to bring us this information. Nah, it came from the Uni Insider program. So you can't download this yourself. So we're going to flip through it. As you can see from the speed, we're going to flip through it pretty darn fast because I'm going to focus again on the things that I find most interesting going forward. And if you want more details, do check out that full hour long video. Uh, so one of the big things that we've got going on here is USD integration. Now, this was actually announced a couple of months back and USD is the universal scene description or descriptor format. Uh, it's a picture format. It is the new high end interchange format and everybody is getting behind it. If you ever check out my Omniverse video, you can actually one click export a scene from Unreal Engine uh, to the Omniverse tools, and it is then can, you could put them into Blender, you could put them into Unity or wherever. While that integration is now available for the Unity engine as well. Again, I highly recommend you check out that Omniverse video. But USD integration is definitely a good thing. Now we've had a number of improvements to the Package Manager over the past, and we're getting some more coming forward. Package Manager is very fundamental to Unity, and I do like to see improvements there. Now this is one of the most interesting ones, though. Uh, they're moving forward towards modernizing .NET. If you're a Unity developer, you know what is like to be stuck in like the ancient versions of the I think they were on .NET like three for like seven or eight years so it's nice to move forward but what they're doing is they're migrating to the core CLR uh, that is the high performance cross-platform implementation of the common language runtime from Microsoft uh, they're also working on fast play mode uh, support so when you click play it will get in there that well faster it's a well-named thing uh, trying to make the use of asynchronous and a wait keywords from C sharp themselves more uh, used throughout the engine uh, so definitely some nice improvements there uh, we have in the input systems in uh, 2023 so released February 2023 so this just happened uh, this is a more powerful but more complicated system for fine-tuning your controls. It's kind of an abstraction layer, but coming forward, you're going to have easier configs and new APIs for handling it. So it should get easier to work with throughout the year. Uh, UI Toolkit, this was a big one uh, from last year's release. UI Toolkit was a it's a new, uh, well, as the name says, UI Toolkit. It's a powerful solution for uh, doing uh, controls, layouts, etc. of user interfaces. Right now, it's primarily used inside of the Unity editor. Going forward, we're going to have a consistent API. So you're going to be able to use this in your game as well. They're looking to replace basically anywhere you would use I am GUI. This is going to become the new default. You've got data binding support in there. So you could bind, you know, a text field to a data, to a variable in your program or whatever. So if it updates, it automatically updates inside your your uh, your UI. If you've done any work with something like .NET Forms, you get an idea what the UI toolkit is all about. But it's very cool that this is going to be the same in both the editor and in your game. Also got a number of new widgets coming, and there is a new sample and ebook showing how it works. Uh, this one again, LTS 2023. Now this is just UI improvements across the board, which is nice. And they're actually uh, so if I can go back in time here, they are using their UI toolkit to do these controls. So you're going to get a consistency of uh, user interface as a result as well. Now, the memory profile, this was actually released about two months back in 1.0 release and does give you more insight into how your game runs. Uh, it, it is a nice thing. If you haven't checked it out, I would recommend doing so. We also have a lot of things going on with... Um, networking. Now, this is one of those things Unity kind of keeps changing their networking stack over and over again. Uh, we now have, uh, what is it called? Network for game objects and network for entities available there. A um, So new net code coming on top of that. They've got new UGS stuff. I think I did a video about UGS a couple months ago. So nothing really major to cover in that regard. Uh, ECS or entity component system. Uh, I'm not really sure that we've got anything big to do announcements. Now, we do have nice integration with both uh, DOTS and ECS where it's got some generators for you. So if you're using uh, 
Project Rider instead of uh, Visual Studio or Visual Studio Code for your editor, you're going to get better and better support in the Project Rider IDE, especially with generators, generator baking, uh, that kind of stuff. Definitely a nice improvement in this regard. So your Unity support inside of Project Rider uh, is definitely getting better. If you've never checked out Rider, I would recommend doing so. I should also do an updated video on it because Rider is a very, very cool IDE. Uh, we'll get into the rendering and graphics side of things. Uh, the new stuff here, split graphics job, so accelerate CPU multi-threading performance and ray tracing is coming out of preview in the 23.1 release. So that is the next release uh, this year. Uh, we'll see um, ray tracing coming out of preview, which is very nice. Uh, then also we've got volume optimizations so or reduce CPU time when using multiple volumes. Uh, project build times should improve, uh, and including optimized URP or ERP build times thanks to reduced shader variant generation. Memory usage improvements, again, most of this is just generalized over the last number of releases. Now, if you work on this stuff and I'm just kind of dismissing your work, I apologize. Again, I'm doing this pretty quick. Uh, we do have some improvements here though. Uh, the script will render pipeline layers, so ERP rendering layers now uh, integrated with HDRP. So you're going to see more and more of that, where the, the universal render pipeline and the HDRP are kind of becoming more at parity and more commonality between them. Because right now, supporting both pipelines is a gigantic pain in the ass for content creators, especially like on the App Store or whatever. So as they move those two pipelines closer together in both functionality, and hopefully they eventually merge them, in my humble opinion. Uh, but we are starting to see some of those things where functionality is coming between them. Uh, also, we've got... Uh, uh, render graph now integrated with the ERP. So again, HDRP functionality going into the ERP. So the original idea was ERP was, or the universal render pipeline was going to be for working more low end hardware and mobile games. And the HD render pipeline is for the high fidelity AAA style games. Although I think just so many people ended up migrating to the ERP that it's the primary supported platform at this point in time. So it's nice to see that functionality sort of being more unified. And then on the topic of the ERP again, and I know people despise when I say the word ERP, but I'm, just, I'm never going to stop. So uh, LTS support is getting uh, forward plus rendering paths and crossfading of LODs. And again, that's in the uh, existing stuff. And this de de uh, decal or decal layers are also um, in the existing version. Uh, but in 2. So the 2003 release, first release of the year, you're going to get two releases in the year, by the way. So you got 23.1 and 23.2 are the two versions of Unity that will be released in this year. Uh, along with also the 22 LTS, which is just kind of the, the supported version of the 22 release that's already existing. You're going to get temporal anti-aliasing in addition to MSA, FXAA, and SMAA coming soon. And this is actually kind of nice too, but they're not out yet. We're getting three new sample scenes going to replace like the plywood board construction scene. Uh, so you got terminal showing uh, photorealistic graphics. Um, you got garden for cross-platform stylized and then cockpit showcasing a uh, uh, lightweight, low polygon, highly stylized with custom lighting. So you're gonna have some new ERP samples to start and play with. Uh, in the shader world, what do we have? So, ouch, my voice went away for a second. All right, so we've got uh, mostly existing changes. So you're gonna get procedural volumetric fog coming in the HDRP. Uh, and then VFX graph, uh, mostly again, consistent to what already exists. And here we're gonna get custom HLSL, uh, high level shader language. That's the direct X scripting version, uh, the opposite of GLSL. Uh, create custom blocks using code to create advanced behaviors in the lighting side of things. So this is obviously an area of big improvement or big change because uh, they are again, replacing their GPU light mapping. They used a third party solution for a long time. That is kind of being deprecated, unsupported and changed out. So they're building their own solution here. So seeing quite a few changes on the light mapping side of things. Uh, you're getting in 23.1 screen space lens flares, so automatic lens flares on any shiny surfaces or source, light source. Uh, again, again, back to the GPU light mapper. So you're getting a new light baking architecture. So 1.0 release is going to be in 23.1 and it provides a more predictable and stable light baking foundation. And then in 23.2, Two, it's going to come out of preview and it's going to reduce the minimum spec at two, two gigabytes. Uh, adaptive uh, probe volumes. Uh, we're going to see more robust light leaking prevention, works uh, flows, improved user interface and ERP first release. So core features enable limitations on scenarios and performance for mobile. And then pre-computed pre real-time GI 
uh, next, so this, I don't know exactly when this is going to be, uh, but this is, well, that might just be saying next slide, but this is going to basically be a new dynamic global illumination system, kind of like what we're seeing now with SDFGI in uh, the Godot game engine and, of course, Lumen in Unreal Engine. So I think if we go forward, there's actually a slide very specifically about it. So yeah, here you can see it's for lighting scenarios, HDRP, manage multiple lighting scenarios, baking sets, and blend between them at runtime. And GPU streaming, stream light probe data to use less GPU at runtime. And here it is, pre-computed dynamic global illumination. So dynamic updates of indirect lighting from static contributors like the ground, walls, and ceilings. So you can see the lights being updated as you're moving around the scene. And this is real time. So this does appear to be sort of, again, like SDFGI and Godot and like Lumen in uh, Unreal Engine. But I don't think quite to that scope, but definitely a cool new feature here. Uh, time of day functionality. We've got the new dynamic skies in 2020. 22. Uh, seeing nothing so, so in 2023, uh, point two, and I don't know exactly what a beer shadow map is, but I'm looking forward to it. So you're getting volumetric clouds with beer shadow maps coming in. We're also getting ray tracing is going to be out of preview in um, 23.1. So if you're using ray tracing API uh, on HDRP, and that should be a good time for you in 23.1. Uh, we got VFX graph and terrain height map support, and then, yeah, that's about it. So environment side, uh, we got the new water system at the end of last year, uh, HDRP water. Oh, so we do have an improvement here. So 23.1, we're going to get water excluders, deformers, current maps, foam generator, and CPU simulation leveraging burst uh, compiler to query water deformations and current. So you're going to have a lot more control over your water systems in the next release. Uh, speed tree was just updated literally yesterday when I record this, so two days ago. Uh, better integration, the library is updated as well. Uh, sort of a separate prog uh, program. They actually bought speed tree about two years ago, I think it was now. Uh, so you can also use Speedtree with other engines, by the way. And there is a new full release of Speedtree as well. Uh, end of last year, we got a bunch of new spline tools in there, which is going to really open things up to people creating add-ons or custom tools and so on. Uh, characters. So this is where we're getting into all those things like the enemies video. So they bought Ziva and they bought uh, Weta. And then we haven't really heard too much from it. We got a demo for uh, hair and fur shading. By the way, this demo was released the end of last year. So if you want to check out, see how it runs on your computer, it is available for download. Those so things are working with eyes and caustics and so on. Uh, in 2023.1, we are going to get a dual lobe skin to account for the thin oily layer covering the epidermis and diffuse power for improved ear rendering. So this is really high fidelity stuff that we're seeing here. And more of the Zenva tools are being brought to work with real time. So again, sorry, Ziva, not Zenva. Z Zenva. Oh, Zenva is the training course. I knew that made sense. Uh, and not Zima, that drink that failed hard. Uh, so yeah, in what we're going to see is the face trainer. So deploy ZFT assets to Unity with Ziva RT player in 2023.2. So it's going to be a little bit while until that functionality is in there. But at least we do know that the Ziva stuff is being integrated into the Unity engine over time. On the platform side of things, uh, game activity for Android is being added. So bringing support for the game activity application model is coming in. And then we've got support for ARM64 coming in 2023.1. I think we're going to start seeing more and more ARM-powered Windows devices uh, as time goes on. Right now, the Surface X is one of the more predominant ones, but there's a handful of them out there. Uh, so yeah, ARM support is going to be coming, so you're not going to have to run your applications on ARM devices through an emulation layer. Going forward, uh, here on the web side of things, most of it is actually existing changes and improvements there in XR slash VR slash AR slash etc. Uh, we've got, so PS2 VR 2 is now supported pretty much day one. So obviously PlayStation VR 2 is now available on market. So functionality and support is in there. Uh, mixed reality, a uh, composition layer, so high resolution text, video, and UI elements are being added. Uh, XR interactive tools to so create interactive in, sorry, intuitive interactions with eye gaze, poke interactors, and more. Uh, AR, you're getting AR foundations for Quest devices, bring the real world into your game. That's interesting. I don't know how many Quest devices actually support AR. So just the Quest Pro, I think, at this point in time. Uh, and pass-through camera support uh, is coming in, existing stuff. Uh, so you're going to get a new uh, project template. So if you're working in virtual reality, augmented reality, or mixed reality, a new template is coming. And... 
That's it. So we did this in 15 minutes instead of 55 minutes. Uh, and I think I covered the key things. Again, if you're interested in the stuff that happened in previous releases, I did kind of a rundown of the two uh, releases of 2022. Now do keep in mind, again, there are two official releases every year. Uh, so you get that you're going to get 2023.1 and then about halfway through the year, we'll get 2023.2. So hopefully we see 2023.1 in the next, uh, say, two months. Uh, I would imagine that time frame wise, that would be maybe a little bit less. Uh, but yeah, that's what we can expect from Unity. I, I kind of wish they'd made it a little bit more public, the kind of stuff that they're working on. And it's kind of in this weird catch 22 moment now where we know what's coming because we've seen like all these preview releases. So they're not going to shock us with new features like Unreal Engine can, but there's definitely some stuff in the works. So let me know what you think of uh, the Unity roadmap of the stuff that we've got coming. Are you using any of the new stuff? Or are you just finding too many things are broken that you're stuck with an old version or not using Unity at all? Or is there something here that you're really excited and looking forward to? Let me know that. Comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. And thank you to those Bothan spies for bringing us these slides. All right, that's it. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.